All right, so the next question is, why does my shoulder click when I'm doing push-ups? Uh, I'll start with this. Uh, I have never experienced it, so I really don't have much feedback on it. I would say it has to do with something with your joint and your shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sports exercise. I'm a business education major with a minor in economics. But um, I have seen people in the gym, and they do have shoulder problems. Um, I know they were getting work or having it looked at. I would have to say it would be something around your AC joint. Um, that seems to be a very common shoulder problem. Maybe Kyle can go into more detail uh, on this. Basically, what I would be thinking here, I think it might have been because of an injury. Uh, might not have been too severe or anything like that, but any type of damage in that shoulder region, even a rotator cuff or even not even a muscle but in a ligament or even a tendon in there, that could cause it, or it could just be air in your joints that is causing that, but not 100% sure. But if there's any uh, range of motion issues, I would probably tend to side with the injury thing. But if, again, if there's no range of motion issues, no other injuries, it could just be, could be air. Or even uh, shoulder retraction issues. So, I don't know, there could be a number of different things. It's hard to say without watching you. I'm sure if I actually watch you do a push-up, I could be better inclined to answer that question. Next one on the list. All right, so all right, this one's a good one. So this question's a good one. This is from my man, Ian Munro, who was a past client of mine. How do you make yourself stand out in a competitive fitness industry? Uh, this question, I mean, Ian, I believe he is starting to do personal training and stuff like that, so I'll hit that. Uh, I don't know. The, the per, I'll hit personal training first. Per, the personal training industry, it's, ah, it, it's really competitive, but then again, it's really demographic to to your area. So, A, I would say work in the gym first. Work it, for one, you're not going to have to do as much marketing and all that stuff. So go work in a gym. You're going to have your clients are all going to be your gym members. Those are going to be your prospective clients. It's going to be a lot easier to get clients. Uh, do some free stuff. So be willing to go up to people and say, hey, you know, maybe I can help you out. I'll, I'll design a free workout program for you or even a free consultation or a free fitness assessment, something like that, just to get your name out there. So once you've done that in the, in the gym setting, then your client list should just continue to grow. Now, as far as the online setting goes, really, with social networking right now, that's that's what you gotta hit. You gotta hit Facebook, gotta hit Twitter, gotta hit the message boards. I know your message boards champ over here. Um, YouTube is huge. Sitting here making a YouTube video. Why? For networking. Yeah, I wanna give you guys information, but again, it's just another way to get the name out there. Um, so that's the, the bottom line with that. Is you have to get your name out there, and you can be the best trainer in the world, but if nobody knows you, you're not going to have any clients. Or, on the flip side, you can really not know what you're talking about, but be excellent at marketing and getting your name out there, and you're going to have a shitload of clients. So, again, put that in perspective. So, really just to answer your question, um, I, I think, I guess I said that one last part wrong, because A, you do need a, a good product. Number one, you need to have a good product. So you need to be able to um, get your clients' results. So as long as you're getting clients' results, it's going to come down to networking and stuff like that. You want to add anything to that? Or? Okay, I'll first start off with um, what was the first part of the question that had to deal with... Um, uh, how do you make yourself competitive in the fitness industry? And I kind of broke it down into training and then online. Okay, well, uh, in the fitness industry, um, I think record is a big one. Um, I work with a guy, his name is Jason Theobald out of Cincinnati. He runs a um, ScoobyPrep.com. Mm -hmm. And Jason's, if you look at his testimonials on his page and his clients and their results that he's gotten with him. That kind of sparked me with him and one of his clients, his name was Jamin Nackpin, who I followed on the um, MD forums when he went through his prep for the Monster Mash and he actually won the show. First started me with Jason over two and a half years ago and then as he expanded he has Sue Knott who is an NPC competitor who competed at the Arnold this year. I know he has an IFBB Pro or a couple to his name. Not only that, you have to look at what does that personal trainer offer for me, okay? If you're looking for a personal trainer, what do you want to do? You want to see how fast they respond. What is their response time? What do they have to offer? Their prices? Things along those lines. I have an article on Tiger Fitness and Machine Muscle about choosing the right coach. If you read that article, it will give you more in-depth information as far as what do you look for in a coach. Um, other than that, getting your name out there, geo geological location, 
think 3D MJ as far as natural bodybuilding goes on the West Coast. You got Shelby Starnes, I think he's out of around Michigan, so he hits those clients. You got Jason and Cincy, um, other huge coaches out there. Think about Lane Norton down in Florida. So geological is a big one. Um, as far as marketing goes, I myself I post on a lot of boards. A lot of people know me as Chef Bob. Um, I, I post a lot of cooking videos. I post my pictures on multiple forms. I post on nearly, I think, eight, nine, ten forms daily. Kyle was looking at my tabs on my uh, my MacBook <laughs> earlier, and he goes, "How the hell do you keep up with all of that?" So um, it's just something I do, something I'm interested in. Um, I take cooking to a something I like to do. It the term I I F Y M if it fits your macros kind of gets thrown in the to the curb there. But um, most of my diet is is very on on par, especially working with Jason. But um. <clears throat> Getting back to the question on marketing, yes, like he said, YouTube, um, that's a big one, especially with me and all my cooking videos. Um, online forms, like if you go to bodybuilding.com, nutrition section, you'll see I post a lot of pictures as far as what I eat. Um, same can be said with muscle and strength, cellucor boards, USP Labs, uh, RX Muscle. I mean, I could just go on and on with all the sites I deal with. When people see these company owners come up to me and say, hey, you know, could you do something on if I sent you this protein product, could you do a review for me? Um, I recently just did a couple with Quest Nutrition. They had new peanut butter cups and crunch bars. So I gave them my taste review and sent that out there to them. And, you know, they appreciate that and they do favors for me in response. So getting your name out there first and foremost, the key thing, um, you know, then going from there, if clients do come up to you, how do you respond to them? Do they have good word of mouth for you? And then online, you know, hitting those social networking things, key concepts as far as getting your name out there. That would be my advice coming from someone not in the industry, but more within the education degree. So can't really help too much more with that. Excellent. That was good. Good answer. Good deal.